Hello, my name is Dr. Rachel Wallace, and I am one of the anatomy and physiology faculty here at Dell Medical School. I teach anatomy to um, medical students at Dell between their first and their fourth year at school. And normally the medical students learn anatomy off of real human tissue, but we also provide models in the lab for these students to learn off of to help them get a good sense of the three-dimensional relationships of the structures that they're learning. And I have with me two models of the heart that we provide in the lab. We have this Texas-sized giant heart model and this still larger than uh, normal size heart model as well. Now the heart can be divided in two ways. It can do, be divided as a superior and an inferior or upper and lower portion. And it can be divided as a right and left portion. The superior portions of the heart are the atria, and the inferior portions of the heart are the ventricles. You can also think of the heart uh, as a left and right dual pump system, where blood with low levels of oxygen enter the heart through the right atrium, get pumped into the right ventricle, and then make their way to the lungs where they will become oxygenated. Then that deoxygenated blood will enter through the left atrium, go into the left ventricle, where it will then get pumped out into the aorta. And from there, it'll reach all cells of your body and bring oxygen to all cells. See these vessels right here? These red vessels represent the coronary arteries they're actually arising off of the aorta. So what happens when the left ventricle contracts to send oxygenated blood throughout the body, some of that blood is gonna pass into these coronary arteries, which means that the heart is itself the first organ nourished by itself. And then all the rest of the blood will go throughout the body to nourish all other cells. Our smaller heart model allows us to easily take apart the heart and look inside its four chambers. If I take this off, we can reorient ourselves here with the superior and the inferior vena cava bringing low oxygen blood into the right atrium, which then flows into the right ventricle and then leaves the heart to get oxygenated by the lungs via this pulmonary trunk. Oxygenated blood will come back from the lungs in the pulmonary veins that bring blood into the left atrium and then down into the left ventricle, which will then pump that oxygenated blood out into the aorta and those coronary arteries. The atria and the ventricles are separated by valves. And the ventricles and the great vessels, the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, are also separated by these half moon shaped valves that we call the semilunar valves. The valves function to prevent blood from backflowing in the opposite direction. Have you ever heard a heartbeat before? If you've ever listened to a heartbeat, you might hear it sound lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. Why is that? Well, it's because of those valves that separate the atria and ventricles and the ventricles from the great vessels. This model allows me to take out one. I'm taking out the, what we call tricuspid valve, positioned between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The valves are able to close and then open again, close and then open again. And every time they close, if you listen to a heart, that's giving you the lub or the dub sound. The, the valve here between the atrium and the ventricle, and on the other side as well, give you the lub sound. The dub sound is from the closing of the semilunar valves in the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Hi, my name is Dr. Jessica Ibarra. I'm a faculty at Dell Medical School and teach physiology. 
So Dr. Wallace was able to t show you a little of anatomy on the heart. So now let's walk over through some of the function or physiology of the heart. With that, we're gonna focus on the sounds. So taking the heart, what you'll notice is that we had divided it into the left and the right side. And part of the heart function is to also produce a sound based on the closing of these valves that were demonstrated earlier. So two heart sounds can be heard from the normal heart using a stethoscope. The heart sounds, as we mentioned earlier, are lub-dub, lub-dub. The first heart sound is an S1, and the second heart sound we call S2. Now let's listen to a normal heartbeat. the sounds of the heart. The first sound is a closure of the atrioventricular valve, also known as mitral and tricuspid valves. The second sound is heard from the closure of the pulmonic and aortic valves. In some conditions, blood flowing through the heart makes a turbulent pattern. This sound is called a murmur. In occasions, the valve can become rigid and inflexible, producing this turbulent flow of blood. Let's hear the sound that that would make. In some occasions, the valves will not close completely, allowing blood to flow back. In this case, we call it regurgitation. Let's hear a sound of a regurgitation through a defected valve. Sometimes the sounds that you hear from a heart are from a defective valve, but in other occasions there could be a structural problem with the heart itself. In the case of a ventricle defect, you may have a hole between the right and the left side of the heart in the ventricle wall. When that happens, occasionally blood will go through that hole and cause a sound. Let's listen to that. Listening to the heart is a good way to see if there are any problems with either the valves or wall. Sounds are important for doctors there are special doctors of the heart that are cardiologists or cardiac surgeons that can help fix and repair some of the damages that we've already demonstrated. Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Miller, the senior anatomist at Dell Medical School, and one of the anatomist and physiologist teaching faculty that are responsible for teaching our medical students and UT graduate students all about human anatomy, structure, and function. As the very last part of our demonstration, we're going to be showing you an actual human heart to see some of the structures that Dr. Wallace and Dr. Ibarra have shown you on the heart models. We take a look at this heart, the human heart. You can see that there is a large upper area here where the great vessels come out. And if we go down to the bottom, the apex of the heart is sitting down here at the point of the heart. The ventricles are the inferior portions of the heart, as Dr. Wallace mentioned, and they have very strong muscular walls. The atria of the heart are at the top. This is the left atrium extension on the top side. You can actually see some coronary arteries sitting in this heart. Remember the coronary arteries are the very first arteries that arise from the aorta. So the very first thing the heart does actually is nourish itself by sending blood through the coronary arteries, which feeds all the cardiac muscle. Now, if we turn the heart and look at it from the top, you can actually see the largest vessel here, the largest vessel coming off the heart and the largest vessel in the body is the aorta. And if you look down into the aorta, you can see the top of the aortic valve. It's one of the two semilunar valves you've heard about. The other semilunar valve is in this vessel right in front called the pulmonary trunk. 
These semilunar valves make the second heart sound, the S2 sound, when they snap shut. Remember the heart sounds are lub-dub. That dub sound is made by the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valves here. Now to see the valves that make the lub sound, the first heart sound, we actually have to open up one of the cardiac chambers and I'm going to be opening up the right ventricle here. When I do that, you can see there's this elaborate branched cardiac muscle here. Extremely strong and resilient muscle. Remember, the heart beats all the time from birth till death. And in an average person, it will beat between two and three billion times. So the heart muscle has to be extremely strong and resilient. If you take a look inside the right ventricle, you'll see these string-like structures here. They look like parachute cords. They're actually called chordae tendineae or tendinous cords. And they will attach to the bottom of the valve that we talked about that separates the atria and the ventricles. This is the tricuspid valve, as Dr. Wallace mentioned. It's the valve on the right side of the heart that's situated between the atria above and the ventricles below. And these string-like tendinous cords attach to the valve leaflets. And these cords keep the valve leaflets from being pushed upward into the atria when the ventricle, which is very strong, contracts during a heartbeat. So this is one of the atrioventricular valves. There's another valve on the left side called the mitral valve. And these so-called atrioventricular valves snap shut at the beginning of the heartbeat and make the lub sound. So lub-dub really represents the closure of the valves you've just seen now. Lub, the two atrioventricular valves, and dub, the valves up here in the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. So the next time that you listen to a heartbeat, you have now, you'll be able to say at least that you've now seen actual human valves inside a heart that make these sounds. And as Dr. Ibarra pointed out, Physicians and other healthcare workers, just by listening to the heart, can very often tell whether there's any damage or disease to specific parts of the heart, one or more of the valves, or even sometimes to the heart muscle itself.